you're looking for something smart to watch on YouTube, well, you clicked on the right video. I am too smart. I am too smart. SMRT. I mean, S-M-A-R-R-T. Uh, okay, well, there's also this, the S-M-A-R-T, hashtag one, Brabus. And look at it, it's so cute, isn't it? But it's also fun, it's funky, and it's fast. Like, really fast. Today, I'm going to find out what all this Brabus stuff is all about. I'm going to see just how practical the hashtag one is. And at the end, I want to talk about one major drawback to this car. So make sure you stick around. Oh, and please consider subscribing. We are a new channel and we could really use your support. But first up, you need to know that the micro two-seater smart you knew from 1998 is gone. It was radical, it was cute, but it never made money and now it's dead and buried. The smart of today is still all about funky city cars, but they're now more practical. No more dinky two-seaters. This one actually seats five people easily. And yet, it's still pretty compact. It's exactly 4.3 meters long and just over 1.8 meters wide. So if you think about a super popular like compact SUV like the BMW X1, well, that car is 20 centimeters longer than this. The hashtag one is decently tall though, and that really helps with the whole baby SUV thing. But if there is one dimension that's impressive, it's the wheelbase. It's 2.75 meters, which is longer than the X1s. I should probably tell you, there's one body but two versions of the Hashtag 1 in Singapore. Both have the same 66 kilowatt hour battery, but the entry-level Pro Plus is a single-motor, rear-wheel drive version with 272 horsepower. As of July 2024, it costs $238,888 with COE. And then there's this, the twin-motor version with all-wheel drive. It costs $40,000 more, but you get. 428 horsepower. And that's what the Brabus label means. This is a seriously powerful, high-performance car. And you can kind of tell just by looking, right? I mean, look at this red lip over here. And this grill actually has these lovely red accents. I mean, red always signals excitement and danger, right? And there's a Brabus badge over here, so your enemies will fear you. Mm, the Pro Plus doesn't have these air vents. Oh, actually, they're fake, so they're not air vents. Uh, well, let's check these out. Ah, they're actually real. So if you're a pigeon watching this, well, beware of this area. Now behold these 19-inch beauties. Same size as on the Pro Plus, but different design. 19 inches doesn't really sound huge, but I think on a car of this size, they are pretty large. And I'm sure you've noticed these red brake calipers. Again, I don't know if they're any bigger than on the Pro Plus, but simply by virtue of the red color, they have easily 50% more braking power, at least. By the way, this matte grey finish is exclusive to the Brabus edition. So if you see a hashtag one coming your way in this colour, you better watch out. Now, there's a bit more red on the stripe over there, another Brabus badge, and even this door handle is red. Come to think of it, it is a little bit subtle, but the message is very clear. This car is a chilli party. And look at all the spicy chilli sauce back here as well. I mean, from these inserts here to the contrast stitching and who doesn't love a red seatbelt? Come on. Oh, and this upholstery, it's suede. So even in the back, this car is very, very sporty. But just look at how much space I have in the back here. I mean, I'm not short on leg room or head room. And it does have a flat floor because it is an electric car, remember? So plenty of space for your feet to roam around. But you don't buy a car like this for space in the back. That's just what you tell the Minister of Home Affairs come Minister of Finance. And there is one more thing you can tell her just to make this car a little bit more convincing. It was designed by Mercedes. When I say designed by Mercedes, I mean the actual design department of Mercedes-Benz, led by this guy, Gordon Wagoner. It's a long story, but Smart used to be a joint venture between Mercedes and Swatch. The logo has a C for cute and compact, with an arrow because it's a forward-looking brand. And then Swatch bowed out because watches are easy, but cars are hard, and in 2019, Mercedes relaunched Smart as a pure EV brand by going 50-50 with G. Lee. You know, these guys. The ones who own or control or have a major stake in these guys. So the Chinese do the engineering, the Germans do the design, and it all makes sense because of this guy. This is Ji Li's founder, Li Shufu, who just happens to be the biggest individual shareholder of Mercedes. 
So if you've been inside a Mercedes before and you find all this very familiar, well, now you know why. And it is very Mercedes. It's dominated by a big central touchscreen. Okay, this screen over here is pretty small, but look at the architecture and the way things are laid out. It's all very Mercedes. Even these buttons over here, they're the same layout that you would find in a contemporary, say, C-Class, E-Class, whatever. Even the transmission lever is similar and the signal stocks and wipers are all in one stock, just like with a Mercedes. This Brabus edition does have ambient lighting that you can adjust. Let me show you what I mean. So let's go from red to cosmic harmony, or let's go to Cuba fresh. Yeah, I like that. And again, it wouldn't really be a Mercedes if it didn't have adjustable ambient lighting. This part is very Mercedes, right? I mean, you've got this wireless charging pad over here, and these are where the USB charging ports are. Then, okay, I've got another slot here for an oversized mobile phone, a couple of cup holders but it really makes use of its EV layout very well because you've got a very deep console box over here and I can put my lunch or whatever I like down here. And okay, I bet you're wondering about how plasticky this is. And honestly, it's not great, but the rest of the car is pretty nice. Oh, and the storage extends to up here as well. Gonna need these in a while. And okay, this seems to be an EV thing because the Jaguar I-Pace has that, the Tesla Model 3 and the BYD Seal, they all have a glass roof. But unlike those cars, let's say if you're a true blue Asian person and you wanna avoid the sun, well, they're gonna be just fine. You know, even if the hardware is very German, the software is anything but stuffy and boring. In fact, it's all very colorful and playful. It looks like it came from a game. So let me just change the driving mode. And look, I'm in a whole new world. And I can even do things like, say I could change this little avatar over here from a cheetah. And you know what, it'd be nice, and I've seen this on the internet, if you could just buy the little accessories for your avatar or even buy new animals for your car. But I'm gonna switch it over to a fox. So now there's two foxes in the car. Even the design of the car's key is very, very playful. In fact, I think you could say it's fucking playful. Even the way you operate this car is completely new. Like, I didn't have to turn it on, I just got on board and it just powered up automatically. And things like adjusting the wing mirrors, it's all, well, there's no switch over here, it's all done on the screen. Let me show you what I mean. I'll just press this button. Use the buttons on the right-hand side of the steering wheel to adjust the angle of the door mirrors. So if I want the right mirror, I do that, and then I use the switches here, and I'm good to go. And it's like that in other electric cars, but it's just less confusing in this one because it actually tells you what you need to do. So now, pretty much ready to go, but am I ready for 438 horsepower? Okay, let's start out by driving at sensible speeds, guys. And first impressions are, this doesn't actually feel like a small car. I mean, I don't feel like I'm in a little hatchback and I'm in danger of getting run over by a bus. Okay, it's an SUV, but I don't feel like I'm in a Range Rover either. So overall, it is a nice size. It doesn't feel like a hulking SUV, but it doesn't feel like a tin can either. And you know, it's typical electric car. I mean, it's super quiet and yeah, there is a lot of performance, like instant acceleration. I mean, you know, it has 438 horsepower, but the peak torque from both motors is something like 534 Newton meters. It has all wheel drive, of course. So yeah, it is pretty quick. This car only weighs 1.9 tons, which is okay, pretty light for an electric car. Okay, since it's electric, I'm sure you want to know about the range, right? The claim is 400 kilometers, but obviously you're not going to get that if you use all the horsepower. So if you're driving, let's say to Kuala Lumpur, you're going to need to stop at least once. But if you can find a high performance charger along the way, you can go from 10 to 80% in less than half an hour. Most people, if they rely on public charging, well, I reckon if you use like a 50 kilowatt DC charger, which is really common around the island, you probably just need, say, two hours to charge the battery fully. Not that you should charge it fully all the time. Wow, something I noticed as well, the suspension is actually pretty firm on this car. And I guess it's a high performance car, so it's supposed to feel like that. And many EVs do have firm springs, and this is one of them. But you know, it's a very modern car as well because it has things like uh, active driving assist. So if I activate the cruise control, like so, the car actually monitors traffic ahead of me and I don't have to do much. It'll brake for me, keep me in lane. So it does have sort of semi-autonomous driving. And being an electric car, okay, it doesn't have paddles here, but I can adjust the level of regenerative braking that I want. You know what, guys? I mean, this car is fast. Okay, it's immediate electric car, but it's not very exciting. Let me just see if 
play around with the settings a little bit. Oh, okay, virtual engine sound. Yeah, okay, I can hear that. And I'm going to change the driving mode. I'm going to skip past sport and go straight into Brabus mode. See what that's like. Whoa, shit! Okay, okay, that just changes everything. I mean, the character of the car is just, whoa, so much more immediate. And you know what? I can feel like the power is actually going more to the rear motor to make the car feel a little bit like that. Whoa, man! This car gets from 0 to 100 in just 3.9 seconds, guys. And uh, <laughs> these Brabus guys are just crazy. In fact, Brabus has always been a little bit crazy. The company started as a workshop in 1977 and it specialized in modifying Mercedes Benzes to make them go faster. I first heard of the brand in the 1990s when they stuffed a V12 engine into the E-Class and created the Brabus EV12. That had a top speed of 330. Tire salesmen everywhere were overjoyed by this. Since then, Brabus has become an official tuning company of Mercedes-Benz, meaning its cars are modified, but they still have an official factory warranty. And now they're doing their magic with Smart, which I think is pretty genius. Okay, for sure you're gonna have fun behind the wheel, guys, but what about this side of the car? Well, this next part might make you go, hmm, because the Hashtag One only has 313 litres of boot space. There is a Franc, but that's only 15 litres, and 313 is divided by this upper and lower section. But all is not lost, because even though it sounds like it's really small, you can get it back in, no problems. Okay, maybe not quite like that, but certainly like that. And just for kicks, I could always uh, fold this up and put this in like that. So yeah, job done. Hmm, okay, no problem. I'm sure we can get this in as well. I can do this. Uh, I could just fold this back down. And okay, I can put this in here like this. Uh, okay, know what? I, I can take this and put it under the floor, which I should have done before putting this bag in. But never mind. You live and you learn. So yeah, that disappears under there. And that gives me space to put this over here and stack this one on top. You can tell I've been working out, by the way. So yeah, that goes in. Job done, I think. Ooh, okay. You know what, guys? Give me a minute. The game here is flexibility. And of course, like with any SUV, you can always fold the rear seat backs down to expand the boot. But what happens if you really want to carry people as well as luggage? Well, you can slide the rear seats forward and you can even put the seat backs more upright. That gives you a little more space and you can get a surprising amount of stuff into the car that way. But I think it all boils down to expectation. If you want your smart to do everything, including hauling huge items home from IKEA, then you're bound to be disappointed. But if you think about it as a small, fun car first and a practical car second, along the lines of something like the upcoming Mini Ace Man or the Volkswagen Golf R, then it's probably not too bad. Okay, so the boot is small, but it is very flexible, so I don't think it's a deal breaker. But there is one drawback to this car that I really, really have to point out. And that is, if you want to drive a Brabus edition of the Hashtag One, you really have to pay for the privilege. And that's because electric cars in Singapore are taxed according to how powerful their motors are. And because of that, every year, just to keep this car on the road, you have to pay $4,416. So just think about that, right? If you keep this car for 10 years, that's another 44 grand just in road taxes alone. I've done the sums and it's something like $12 a day just to have the car sitting there. And that's not really a flaw, but it is something that you need to be mindful of. In fact, it feels really expensive for the car just to be here while I'm telling you all that. So is it a thumbs up or a thumbs down from me? Well, it's one up and one down. Thumbs down, not because of the small boot or even the high road tax, but I actually think that the range is pretty much on the bubble. So this has a claim of 400 kilometers, but that's in perfect conditions. In Singapore traffic, maybe subtract 80 kilometers and you're down to 320. But this car has an NMC battery, which you're not supposed to charge to 100% all the time. So you're down even more. Bottom line is, I think most drivers in Singapore would have to charge this car maybe eight times a month or twice a week, minimum. But for the thumbs up side, well, this thing is just exciting to drive. It's almost like an Italian supercar. I mean, it accelerates like crazy and even sounds a little bit like a GTI. Yes, the road tax is high, but 
Seriously, for most of us, a Lamborghini or a Ferrari is just never gonna happen. But this car is just 20% the price of those things. So at the end of the day, I don't know if this is a smart choice, but it sure is a fun one. Woohoo!